And would you all stand for the pledge to the flag? And I shall lead you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I have no idea what's going on there, Jean. I tried to bring up the the calendar or the. Flag. Don't bring up the flag. It's okay. So we fast. I, good. Yeah, I tried. It didn't. Um, work. Public comment. We have one member of the public here. This Ashley Ben 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 Jordan. Do you have a comment, Miss Public? It's muted. Not. Okay. Well, then we are going to move on to the budget presentation. So who's on, Susan or Keith or both? Both, except um, Jean, my screen sharing is not working. It says disable. Could you quick click that? Yep, I've got it. You're set. Thank you. Okay. So this is part two of the budget presentation that we started, um, I guess last month it would have been, maybe even December. Um, so we had reviewed the three um, components of the BOCES budget, which is the admin, which is also capital and rental. And then we have our um, program budget. So tonight or today, we're gonna focus on our COSER budgets and how we put those together. Um, we are going to talk a little bit about capital as well because we covered rental the last time. And then we're going to give you an update and show you how tuition and program charges um, are calculated. And then just have a um, just an overall conversation about where BOCES um, obtains its revenues from. And I can't see everybody on my screen. So if you have a question along the way, don't hesitate to shout out to me and, and ask me to stop because I'm not going to be able to see everybody at the same time, so you won't hurt my feelings. Um, so from a program, programming um, and COSER budget perspective, basically everything that we put together is based on ISRs, which is the initial services request um, from a district. So if you've been on a, a district board before, you know that districts send us um, the number of CTE students, special ed students, and they let us know what other non-instructional um, programs and services they're going to participate in at um, in any one given year. We uh, typically do initial services requests around this time of the year. They're always due somewhat in um, early January. And then we complete the process again, closer to May 1, because May 1 is the statutory deadline. Um, and we ask them for their final services request and that's their lock-in commitment for the upcoming school year. So what is the basis for um, a BOCES program or, and or um, service budget? So I just told you it's built on the initial services request. So if we have, you know, six districts that want to participate in the central business office or in the health and safety coaster, or if we have 400 students that want to participate in, in CTE, we build programs, we hire staff, and um, we request resources that basically fulfill um, the needs of that particular program. And each one of those coasters is independent. So CTE doesn't, you know, pay for things in, you know, instructional support services and, and vice versa. Every budget has to be um, self-sustaining, self excuse me. And this year, our final services requests are due on April 3rd, April 23rd. Um, so this is just kind of um, a ballpark overview for the board. We have over 30 individual COSERs, so 30 different programs and, and or services that we sell to our eight component school districts, as well as to school districts outside of our county. Um, obviously, we offer a wide right, a range of career and technical education programs. We also offer several different program ratios, 811, 813, 1211 in the special education arena. We also have a variety of itinerant services, both instructional and non-instructional. So anything from a shared uh, physical therapy or therapist, occupational therapist, to our shared food service um, staff, which would be on the non-instructional side. 
We have a host of general um, instruction coasters. Those are things like arts and education, uh, distance learning, and SPARK and IDT because that's a general ed population of students. On the instructional support side, um, we obviously have school improvement. We offer a variety of professional development and consultants to help um, our districts meet their curriculum goals, um, satisfy APPR regs, et cetera. We have model schools, um, then into the management services, we run uh, voice over IP. So we have helped a number of our component school districts upgrade their voice over IP phone systems. We have shared um, network uh, administrators, uh, shared land techs. You know, we have a central business office, health and safety. Those are the kinds of coasters that would go in each um, one of those buckets for lack of a term. And then those numbers in parentheses are just the ranges for the different um, coasters that are included in each one of those categories. So in summary, we have six different types of um, service categories. Um, in terms of what ABOCES offers its districts. Each one, and I'm not gonna go into great detail here, but this is like a summary of a COSER budget. You have staffing, whether it's certified or non-certified, which would be like civil service staff. In some um, COSERs, we need specific equipment, especially in like a CTE where there are certain um, requirements for culinary or, or other things um, that they would need. Obviously, there are certain supplies and materials, whether you're teaching in a classroom or you're running W-2s in a central business office. We have a variety of contractual um, obligations for each one of the coasters. Like, we can't do anything, especially in our current COVID environment without our line, you know, charges, our internet, our uh, wide area network. Um, obviously, we don't do a lot with conferences and our mileage is down because we're not traveling. Um, but we still, you know, use our copiers for um, scanning things and uh, getting information back and forth um, to our districts. We do cross contract for some services. Um, I think a great example for the board is your policy service with Erie um, BOCES. So that's one example. We also use like Duchess BOCES to process our E rate. So um, similar to our school districts, there are um, a number of services that we also cr uh, cross contract for. And then our fringe benefits is the same as a school district. You know, we have obligations for ERS, TRS, TRS, FICA, our health and dental insurance. And each one of the coasters has all of these components. And this is just kind of a little summary. We are a service organization. We're not a factory that produces widgets or items, you know, and as a service um, industry, 80% of our um, budget is salary and fringe benefits. And that's not dissimilar to other service industries or our component school districts. So I wanted to give you like just a, a quick example, because I know um, that not everybody has been through the budget process or um, attended um, BOCES specific um, budgeting presentations before. So in our alternative education program, um, we need four teachers because we have to have the four core content, math, science, social studies, and, and English. We have um, 44 seats currently purchased um, for that program, um, but we're, I'm going on 2021, not 21, 22. So assume 40 seats, 40 seats purchased on the FSR and the final services request. In addition to the teachers and the paraprofessionals, we have a full-time social worker in that program. And then just like our other instructional programs, you know, those students also need to participate in physical education, health, art, music. They need a principal and clerical support to run that program. The supplies and contractual, like I mentioned, you know, they need certain materials. All of those staff members um, also have benefits associated with their salaries. Everybody has to pay into O&M because we need to turn the lights on, we need to heat the building, the building needs to be cleaned, um, and then technology, like I said, the internet, our uh, tech support. So in the current year, the budget for the alt -Ed program was almost a million and six, as you can see from the slide, and we had 40 seats purchased on the FSR. So the tuition for our current alternative education program is $39,990 per student. A BOCES budget is a little bit dissimilar from a school district budget in that we increase and decrease throughout the year. So here's my million five ninety nine six. So here's the, the, the detail behind this year's alternative ed budget. This is just a, a screenshot from WinCap showing the, the million five nine nine six hundred. 
But after the FSR, we had additional seats um, purchased. Um, one of them was here in Livingston Manor. So we brought our total up to, to 44. So now our new budget is 1,636,800. So when we do our actual costs at the end of the year, our tuition is going to be probably less than the 39,990 per person, because obviously if the divisor increases, then we're gonna save a little on tuition. And when we talk about surplus and uh, deficit at the end of the year, then that's when districts get money back. So if we have additional participation and it costs us less to run a program, that's when districts get surplus back. If we have less participation in a program and we need to make adjustments during the year, then sometimes there could either be a deficit or like I said, we make adjustments during the year. Um, and we have been um, doing some of that on Spark and IDT because those daily um, utilization rates are a lot lower in our current COVID environment with being remote than they typically are when we are in full 100% um, in-person instruction. So this little slide, um, I kind of did probably more for the people that had been on district boards because our BOCES budget process, like I said, is COSER specific. So each one of these, these are two different COSERs, have lines for everything. Whereas in a district budget, your salaries and your benefits are, are lumped into one line. They're not COSER specific. So that's one of the, the big um, differences between um, how each entity builds its budget. Um, so how do we charge for um, a BOCES COSER? Each COSER has its own unique cost methodology. And actually in the fall of each year, the superintendents approve the cost methodology. So if we're charging per person or, or per pupil in the current year, and they wanted to change it to like per district, not that that would probably happen, but, um, or maybe they wanted to get rid of the two-year average or make that recommendation, then we would have to um, look at any recommendations that they um, make to us. But basically the, the primary ways that um, we take those budgets and um, assess charges to the district are either on a per, um, per student basis, Sometimes we do a, a like a pooled rate and then divide out like the number of days or charge like the, the hourly rate for like itinerants or there are some instances where it doesn't matter whether you're Roscoe or Monticello, what the services that we're providing are the same. So we just do a flat per district um, rate. A lot of things we do on an ARWADA basis and we talked about ARWADA um, in the last budget presentation or sometimes it's a a matter of like an actual utilization basis um, or and it could be a combination of any one of those things um, like for school improvement we do a base plus our water um, and we try to um, make sure that we're equitable in how we assess for um, charges to the district so like in that example there are some things in school improvement that every single district needs like I said it doesn't matter whether you're a Roscoe or a Monticello then there are other things that they do that really are dependent upon the number of teachers or the number of uh, students in a district. And so obviously a larger uh, district would have a higher ARWADA, so they're paying a bigger share for a service like that. And a smaller district would have a smaller ARWADA and, and less staff. And like I said, we just try to be equitable when we come up with the rates for the services. Are there any questions again so far? Because like I said, I can't see all of you. I'm trying to flip through periodically. Okay. Susan, if I could just jump in, it's Ken. Sure. Uh, one thing that you mentioned uh, that differentiates us from a regular district is each of our COSERs must be in the black. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't say, well, we're going to lose a little bit in this area, but make it up in that area. I'm correct. You are correct. Okay. Yep. Um, so BOCES revenues, um, the only place that um, we secure revenues is basically for the charges um, for our services. So whether it's our component districts or, or non-component districts, and we do have several non-component districts, like I said, in both instructional and in non-instructional um, services. Um, the two biggest examples are probably um, special ed. Um, we also have some uh, non-component uh, stu students in our uh, career and tech program. And we have some non-component school districts in our um, central business office. Um, we are eligible for and do have some grants 
our library grant and our teacher center grant are probably the two biggest examples. We used to have a lot more grants, um, but those have declined substantially over um, the years. We do um, assess some individual tuition fees. Um, those are pretty um, uncommon. Um, I think the biggest example um, I would share with you is probably like a cosmetology student who may not have completed all of the hours that they're required to take the boards um, while they were in high school and they may come back and want to complete those hours over the summer or in the fall so that they can sit for their boards. Um, and obviously when we used to run adult ed, we had individual uh, tuition fees. We do earn interest, so we do have interest income, but again, that's a lot smaller than it used to be a long, long time ago. Uh, we don't levy any taxes, unlike a, a school district, and we don't make a profit. So any money that we have at the end of the year is surplus um, that's returned to districts. Um, so our total capital expenses, um, or not expenses, it's what we collect. So it's an expense to the school district. In 2021, meaning the current year, um, the capital assessment was $625,000. Um, again, it's spread over the eight component school districts um, on an ARWADA basis. Um, we are looking to increase that capital collection in the upcoming uh, school year to um, $725,000. We do have a series of um, renovation projects, particularly roof work that needs to be completed over the next couple of years. And so we need to continue to collect capital money to um, develop a, a timeline for these projects. So the A and B wing, which are the two wings when you first um, come into the main campus, like looking to the right and to the left on that front part of the building is the 1,572,000 and change. And there's also some drainage and site work that needs to accompany that project. And then the C wing, which is really where career and tech and our gym is, would be the, um, the next phase. Um, we have collected some capital money over the last couple of years, but we need to continue to increase our capital so that we can take care of these projects. Um, and sooner than later, we're going to also have to replace our, our boilers. So we have been working with our new architect, CS Arch, um, and we've identified these three projects and then followed by um, a window replacement project um, to be um, the priorities based on our annual visual um, assessment um, that they recently completed. Um, in addition to these, and I put them to a side because you can't really do site work or paving. It always has to be attached to a, um, a capital project before you can get aid on it. We will be trying to um, upgrade and uh, fix some of the, because we have some paving issues that definitely also need to be addressed at the main campus. And then we are, we did explore an energy performance project. Um, some of you may have been with us when the BOCES did an energy performance contract decades ago. Um, unfortunately, we didn't qualify for a new EPC. They weren't able to generate enough savings by looking at that type of a project for us at the current time. But um, as we um, do small projects in the building, our intent is to continue to upgrade our lighting with LED lighting. Um, so any little renovation we do internally with our O&M staff, we're gonna continue to try to do that and any other um, energy savings measures that we can take. So this slide, for those of you who were with us, um, whoops, sorry about that. Last year is just the overall uh, BOCES entire budget that I used at the um, annual meeting. So it shows you, um, again, for the current year, not the upcoming year, because we're still um, finalizing that, what our admin budget was, what our other post-employment benefits, which is a component of the admin budget that we talked about um, last time, I think it was December, um, what our rental and capital budget was this year. And as I just mentioned, we're looking to increase that 625 to 725. And then each one of the programs and services, um, then adding in cross contracts. And so we have almost $10 million in cross contracts that our um, districts um, and us purchase. Um, meaning our total general fund budget was just over $47 million for the current year. So that's kind of like it in a nutshell in terms of how, like what Ken said, all of these each little individual closer budgets come together to make one general fund budget um, for the BOCES. 
So if we roll fast forward 2122, and we'll be sending you, this is kind of just a preliminary uh, snapshot of what you'll be getting on February 16th when we give you the WinCap printout of the proposed administrative budget, and we're still in the draft stages, so this is a draft. So um, we would be increasing our admin budget, the portion without factoring OPEB by 3.51%. Our OPEB, meaning our retirees' health insurance, for the first time ever is only going up by 0.64. That's because the DHIC rates are very stable moving forward um, or anticipated for 21-22. So the overall increase um, to uh, the districts is 2.26 on um, an expenditure side. Um, our miscellaneous revenues come from interest and from um, JMT rates and those types of revenues. So um, we'll be assessing the administrative budget charge to the districts of 2,922,717. And that will um, equate to a cost per Arwada of 308.5313. So it's a 3.26 increase to the districts on an Arwada basis. Susan, so, I have a question. Sure. Um, I'm just looking at the 21-22 admin budget slide that you have in front of us? Yep. Okay, if the admin budget is going up by 3.51 and the retirees health insurance budget is going up by 0 0.64, mm -hmm. um, we don't add those two together because that doesn't come out. No, because we pull those out because normally the OPEB increase is substantially higher. Like it's, it's been ah. like, sometimes it's been like 10%. So we want to show the districts that in this particular year, this slide doesn't mean as much as it, as it normally does. It's like, you almost don't need it to explain the administrative budget because OPEB is so the increase is so minuscule this year. That's because DHIC is probably going to come in this year in a, um, believe it or not, a zero to 2% increase, which has not been the case for health insurance in a, a very um, long period of time. Sure. So this is the overall increase when you're com uh, comparing total admin budget to total admin budget. Gotcha. And then I know it's confusing, but at the at the bottom that now I'm into like a 3.26, but we had this conversation about our WADA and I can't remember who like asked some questions about it before, but our WADA had been well over 12,000 um, when I first started in this position in, in BOCES and when some of you were back in, in district and I actually see Ken nodding his head. So you're on my screen this time. So, and we talked about how our WADA is rated with, rated weighted average daily attendance and how there's a higher weighting um, for your secondary population. And so it really depends upon each district's, not only their total enrollment, but their attendance and how that enrollment is divided okay. by K-6 versus, you know, the, the secondary um, students. And so the point of this slide at the bottom is if, if our WADA had stayed flat and didn't go down, then we'd only be talking about a 2.47 increase to the districts. So as this divisor continues to decrease over the years, and this year I think it went down by like 73, the divisor becomes smaller, our costs continue to increase regardless of how frugal we are. And so it's, it's a critical component for the districts because they're paying a higher increase. It's because their ARWADA is going down and it does fluctuate. So there are what I call winners and, and losers every year. Right. So in, while well, overall ARWADA is going down in the county, there are a couple of districts who went up by like 120 and some who went down by like 80 or whatever. And so every year the districts have to assess that information because if their ARWADA went up, they're going to pay for a larger slice of the BOCES administrative pie. Whereas if their ARWADA went down, they're paying for a smaller slice of the administrative pie. And it's all relative and something that they have to pay attention to. And it's not just tied to the administrative budget. It's tied to other things we talked about in, in terms of aid districts receive. And I, I mentioned uh, school improvement is on a base plus ARWADA, health and safety. So there are a variety of other BOCES COSERS that also use ARWADA in terms of how costs are assessed. So this is like the big one because they vote on this, but it, it applies to everything else um, that we also provide. 
Does that make Thank sense? Um, so the, the major increases in the administrative budget, we do have some tied to the reorganization because of the overlap um, with Keith's retirement and hiring the new person early along with contractual obligations uh, for that and um, leaves of absences that have occurred, not just in admin, but overall throughout the organization because of COVID. Um, we did have some major increases in our legal fees. We, we know we've had a couple of um, issues that the board has been involved in um, and we're in a negotiations year and we will be going into another negotiations year because our um, contract with the teachers expires on June 30th, as you know, and then the following year we'll be negotiating CSEA. So we have to factor um, that into our legal fees. We are no longer paying for the um, cross-contracted labor relations service. So like the money that we had allocated to the labor relations service, we moved over into our attorney's fees, legal fees, because we're using our BOCES attorney for that. We did have a major increase in WinCap software um, because they're going through um, some software upgrades um, and some BOCES modules. So that was something we also had to incur. Um, and then some increases in our insurance, liability insurance, and then benefits, ERS and TRS. So if I had to summarize the major categories of increase, these would um, these would be the top ones. Susan? Yep. I was muted and didn't work fast enough, but I have a question to, to go back about Arwada. Sure. What are the COVID effects? Because isn't Arwada calculated on a seat basis in, on a date in October? Uh, it's not on a date in October. It's um, it's throughout the year, um, and that's a really a interesting and b good question, Carol. But our WADA is also backdated because of reconciliation purposes. So we are not going to know the COVID implication until another year because we're always behind with what we're um, with the Arwada that we're using for the upcoming year. So I agree um, with your question. Um, and in about a year, we're going to know the answer. Okay, good question. Um, and then I just kind of summarize this for you so that Again, because I, I know that not everybody has been with us. Um, so this would be the staffing in what I call like really your budget. So as I talked about, you know, a couple months ago, the administrative budget includes the board, the office of the district superintendent, the business office and central administration. From a staffing perspective, because that's typically where most people like might ask you questions. You have a district clerk, a claims auditor, and a treasurer that you know works directly for the Board of Education. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Then obviously we have a, a district superintendent. Um, and I didn't put the clerical on here, but we do have um, clerical because that comes out of a, a transfer charge. Um, central administration, you know, is deputy super part of me, part of the HR director and the HR specialist. And then in the business office, these are all the, the FTEs, which is full-time equivalent. So some of us are in charge of other shared services that we provide the districts. And so that's why pieces of us are here and pieces of us are also in those COSERs, like the share, uh, central business office, you know, my oversight of O&M and health and safety, Jen's oversight of the talent ed and shared HR work that we do um, with the districts, et cetera, et cetera. Um, part of the accountant works for the, the central business office. And like I said, there is a little bit of overlap and that's why I wrote the director of finance and operations and the business administrator in blue because um, Keith is retiring in September and um, in 21, 20, or in 22, 23, that you won't see that 0.27 of uh, director anymore and we'll just have the, um, the business administrator. So I hope that makes sense to everybody. It does. Thank you. So um, my key points are um, a BOCES budget is a collaborative process. Um, myself, Keith, uh, both Jens, Jen Mitchell, uh, Jen DeFrank, because HR is a big component when you're staffing. And if we ever have to make staffing adjustments, we always have to know seniority and um, job titles and functions, et cetera. 
Um, so we all work very closely and very closely with our districts because, you know, we have to bend and flex to make sure that we're meeting their needs, whether it's um, shifting staff, um, hiring more people, adjusting um, to something else that they, or something new that um, they have identified. Um, as Ken mentioned, each budget is independent. We don't, you know, mesh money. CTE doesn't, you know, pay for all ed expenses and vice versa. We do buy things from each other, you know, so like alt ed students may buy or alt ed might buy seats for those kids in CTE, you know, and special ed does pay for seats when a special ed student um, participates in CTE, just like our instructional programs um, do a transfer to school improvement because just like Maria and her staff work with the districts, she also works with our staff on professional development activities um, and other uh, curriculum initiatives that we might need support for. Um, we are a non-revenue generating entity from a tax perspective. All the coasters are funded by um, the school districts. One thing I didn't mention, but when people talk about the administrative budget, I think often they think all of our administrators are included in that budget. That's not the case. So if I'm the principal of CTE or the assistant principal of CTE, my um, costs for my salary and benefits are in that coaster. So sometimes I think that that's a, a nuance where a central administration like myself and Bob and Jen and Keith are, you know, appropriately apportioned to the administrative budget. And then all of the retirees health insurance also has to be included in the administrative budget because that's just the way the law is written. Um, like I said, no funding outside of district revenues and grants. Um, and we have been very busy calculating our 21-22 um, rate sheets. Um, and we anticipate that they will be ready to be presented to the superintendents on Friday. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Does anyone have any questions for Susan? Susan, Carol. do you have a feel for the individual districts and the pain that they're going to go through with their budgeting process and how they, they'll come up with sending their kids to us? It's got to be difficult. I think it's difficult for everybody right now, um, Carol. And, you know, we said 21-22 was going to be more difficult than 2021 as we, like, look to make plans. You know, DHIC thought about doing another premium holiday, and we said, no, we want to end that rate reduction for 21-22, just as an example. And honestly, when I, I listened, I was actually just talking to Bob about this early this morning, um, to some of the projections and what I'm going to uh, characterize as a Band-Aid in, in terms of federal leap that's going to be passed through. I actually think that 22-23 might be an even more difficult because I think that districts might get some funding um, for 21-22, but then if the economy doesn't recover, what's going to happen in 22-23? In uh, so no one, I mean, we've never had the, a magic crystal ball it's always difficult to um, work with the governor's budget projections. You know, he, he coupled BOCES aid and trans aid and everything into this big shared services aid bucket like he has often done before. So like that's a, a disaster. Um, and I would say that in my 20 year career, I think that we bend and flex and, and pivot a lot to meet the district's needs, but this year in particular, and I anticipate next year as well, um, it's requiring us to really communicate with them and really monitor our enrollment. Um, as you know, we had to, unfortunately, for the first time in a very long time, um, make some really hard decisions about staffing mid-year. And those were the SPARC and IDT programs because we just didn't have the kids. And I anticipate that those are the, the types of things we're going to have to continue um, to be very diligent about um, and work with them. Um, on some fronts, um, we had a, a new request to bring back um, a shared psychologist. So on the itinerant side, we may see more requests for shared staff because they may not want to cut a person. Maybe they can cut part of a person. And if they can buy that, that service through the BOCES, that helps them and, you know, helps everybody in the county. Um, in the more discretionary um, types of activities, I would not be surprised if we um, see some changes in enrollment um, or participation rather. 
um, just because of limited resources. So it, it's not going to be a, a fun time for sure. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the other challenges, and then I'll stop rambling <laughs> or venting, um, is just the whole, like, will we be in person, in a hybrid? You know, there's just so many unknowns in terms of what the fall is is really going to, to look like for all of us. I certainly sympathize. Yeah. It's a tough one, a very difficult one for everybody in just about any industry you might be in. Mm -hmm. All right, Susan, thank you as always. Keith will thank you anyway. Very clear, thank you. I lose this Zoom thing every time. I just keep losing it. We see you. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. We can see and hear you, yes. I can't see any of you. I can hear you, but I cannot see any of you. Hmm. Oh, there you are now. You're back. It's very weird. Every time Susan put something up, I had to close this Zoom window to go see it, and I would only see it very small. In any case, back to the agenda. Okay, we need, I need a motion for the adoption of the consent agenda. Sue, thank you. Um, Kathy, thank you very much. And the consent agenda has two parts to it. I hope you've all seen it. And I can't tell you how many times I read that as Sarah Croft instead of Kara Soft. <laughs> it was just very Indiana Jones-like. All those in, no questions? All those in favor, please pay a show of hands. Thank you. Unanimous. Thank you, Jean. Okay, moving along to personnel matters. This too is an action item. Um, before we're going to discuss it, I need a motion. And thank you, Carol. And thank you, Tony. Um, any questions? It's a very small personnel agenda. Okay. So by a show of hands, all those in favor, please raise your hand. Unanimous, so I don't have to call. Okay, now we are down to board member. So rather than go around my screen, which is very odd, I'm going to ask, does anyone have, uh, Sue, you do, you have a comment. I do. I'm actually going to tell you all that I'm registered to go to the Capitol Conference tomorrow morning. It's a virtual conference. Yep. The same thing we always do every year and they've scheduled um oh i don't have my thing up uh there's a zoom call in on friday with aileen gunther and one with the new senator martucci on next monday so i'll be participating in that is kathy weren't you thinking of participating in it was it kathy was it you no okay anybody else planning on attending this okay great well sue We'll leave you a little time on the following meeting, which is in right. two weeks. So I, I do have one comment, if nobody else has a comment that I want to make. Actually, I have two comments. Um, first of all, to make Jean's life a little easier and to stop some traffic that's unnecessary, please remember, you want to respond to Jean that you're going, to, that only if you are not going to attend the meeting. If you're going to attend the meeting, we won't hear from you. If you are not going to be able, or even if you think you're not, you know, if it's questionable, please do respond to Jean. And in the question of responses, I don't know about the rest of you, but I get a lot of BOCES email, um, probably more than most people do. I would like to request, you know, you are all very delightful human beings. And every Friday when Bob sends out, his his statements or anything else that gets sent out everybody likes to respond to him and say nice job thank you you know could you respond to him rather than to everybody or anything else please just respond in your own personal way but you don't have to share it with everybody now if you want to share something with everybody please feel free to but otherwise i know i i go crazy sometimes trying to get if I don't get to see his his particular statements on Friday, his emails, I go crazy because I have to go through everybody's to find what he actually wrote. Right. 
Oh, so if everybody doesn't mind doing that, it would be, I know I would greatly appreciate it. I think Bob might, but I won't speak for him. I will too. Oh, good. So it's not <laughs> just me. Thank you. That was my comment. Kathy, you're on. You're not, you are, you are muted, but I'm going to assume you saying you make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> That's what you said. Yes. <laughs> okay. I need a second, please. Carol Park. Thank you. Um, all those in favor, only one hand. See you all in two weeks. Jean, could you stay on and Susan, could you stay on? Maybe you can help me figure out what's going on with my zoom problem. Everybody else.